Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Let's Play. Today we're taking a look at Black Side Studios Lunar, a alternate history, uh, speculative fiction, 1970s space race game um, set on the moon. Kind of in the vein of TV shows like For All Mankind um, or uh, the movie Ad Astra. The moon has basically been taken over by conflict as the Soviet Union makes it their first, uh, causing of course NASA and the American Space Agencies to have to scramble to get there and creating a new gold rush on the surface. Various other space agencies get involved and you've got war on the moon. So what is this? Um, this is Black Sight Studios sort of, I guess, uh, kitchen table skirmish game played on a 24 by 24 inch board against small crews of astronauts on the lunar surface performing missions um, and generally trying to accomplish their nation's goals. Uh, on the moon. So uh, once again, alternate timeline um, and what would have happened if these nations basically had pushed forward uh, all of the space exploration in the 1960s and 70s uh, to where we're actually having those Cold War conflicts take place outside of Earth. So uh, some beautiful multi-part miniatures. You get two groups. You get five-man cosmonaut team for the USSR as well as a five-man uh, astronaut team for NASA. We also have some of the expansion stuff we'll do going forward, but for today we're going to play a basic game, the small skirmish size, which is 12 oxygen and 15 credits to buy equipment with and throw down. I'll be playing the cosmonauts, uh, my brave comrades on the moon against Jay's, Na like, um, I guess, National Aeronautics and Space Agency, so NASA, uh, from the USA. So show the table, show you the miniatures, and we'll get this underway. So here we are set up to play Lunar, the 1970s alternate fixture, alternate universe, I guess, um, space combat moon game. So uh, what do you get in the box? This is the starter set, uh, the retail one. You're going to get a bunch of cardboard components on a neat sheet, a little measuring gauge. This is your scatter token, so it's a it's a coin flippy one where it points around direction. Out of action slash prone tokens, resource tokens for all your moon bucks that you're going to find. Uh, and then some concentration slash exertion tokens uh, where you can basically upfront spend your um, exertion to basically use your actions from a later turn. Uh, so you're, you're pushing basically to get extra stuff done. You get all of your cards for your two factions in the box, which is the uh, Russian cosmonauts. And then of course the NASA space agency guys. Uh, these do not come in the box. This is additional stuff from the Lunar Icons box set that I'll show off later. Uh, different types of gear. You get your weapon gear and then your item gear. So your non-combat gear, basically combat, non-combat. Dice, you get enough for two players, so uh, hazard die and some D6s for each player. And then a ton of glorious multi-part miniatures. Now, Jay was much smarter than me and decided he would learn the game before building all of them. <laughs> Whereas I was just like, I'm going to build, uh, you know, a cosmonaut with a stabber and a shield <laughs> and just went ham. Um, which means you will want to have like a variety of, uh, of astronaut miniatures. The best one I built was just dude with rock hammer because he's, he's a good starting astronaut. Not, we don't get super stabby until we get gear set up in our rockets. Um, beautiful miniatures, so we got all the US ones, then all of the, uh, the the Soviet ones in various different styles. And you see we did them in different colors and stuff too. We leaned into contrast paints pretty hard. I used my skeleton horde there for my, um, my Soviet cosmonauts, and Jay leading into the apothecary white for his, um, his Americans. You get your rule book, nice perfect bound rule book, um, which has a full campaign system in it. And what we're going to do today is we're going to show you the skirmish mode, which is playing with 12 oxygen, which is actually your action count, um, and 15 credits to buy equipment. And then our next game, which you'll see in two weeks, we're going to start the actual campaign where you start with 12 and 12. So you start with a lot less stuff, so you don't worry too much about what your miniatures are on with, um, because they're going to be like changing and swapping gear a lot. And a big part of the campaign system is basically paying to bring more stuff into space. I'm going through the uh, anatomy of a card. So you always have a commander. You have to have one commander card. And then you can have as many sp uh, specialists as you have generalists. And you actually start with literally any one specialist, a generalist, and a commander when you play the campaign. So you can have a tech specialist, a medical specialist, a combat specialist, and a mission specialist, and they all have various special rules. So like the mission one's really handy. He gets plus to any mining actions or interact actions. Um, whereas the combat specialist, if he does any damage, he gets a free move action, and they double the push distance from doing unarmed attacks. He's really good at fighting in melee. Um, you have your oxygen count, and that's basically your point value and your action value for the turn. So when you're making a 12 oxygen list, you get 12 oxygen worth of astronauts, plus you get um, uh, your, your, that is like your action pool for the turn. You have a mass, that's how much you weigh and how much you can carry. 
So when you buy equipment, he has an improvised weapon, which is mass one, and a resin patch, which is mass zero. He'll start at five mass, and then you'll mark it off to see which, whatever the top one that isn't marked off is his current mass. So he's at five right now. He'll be at six at the start of the game because he's carrying a mass one item. When you got the resources, they add mass two, and if you get into the red, your um, movement value, your mobility value gets reduced by each point in, in the red that you are. You have your mobility, which is the number of inches you can move per oxygen spent per action point. Your competency, which is added to all your tests for interacting and mining and general other repairs and stuff. And then your resilience value, which is how much you add usually when you get damaged um, by things like uh, piercing weapons. So how, how, how not stabbable you are. Uh, then you have special rules. So for instance, my commander has for the motherland during a commander's activation You can force any friendly unit within four inches to take an extra action Regardless of available actions that unit at no oxygen cost you can make someone move or stand up and stuff And then you have your suit integrity um, If you take the first two clear boxes here in damage not too bad, but once you're in the red um, You're losing an oxygen every turn because you're starting to leak oxygen And then when you're in the, the the totally breached you're gonna go out of action And that means that if the, you aren't repaired by the end of that turn that you go out of action You're removed from play because basically you you pass out from not having any O2 And you have your credits now the credits for this one is 15 So all of what you spend has to add up to 15 or less when we play a campaign We only have 12 um, resin patches are used to like repair holes in people's suits, which will get your integrity back. We have an improvised weapon here, and it's common and melee. So uh, cosmonaut like commanders and specialists can have rare equipment, but you can't start with any rare equipment in a campaign. In a one-off game like this, it doesn't really matter. We can have rare stuff. Um, and anybody can have the general equipment, the common equipment. So I've armed my Cosmonaut Commander with a improvised weapon. It's his rifle, it's empty right now. And a resin patch, so you can try and patch somebody up with three of my credits. Um, and then four more were spent on a geology hammer, which you can throw, <laughs> or you can use to make mining actions, or just use in melee. Um, and a resin patch on my Generalist, and then my Cosmonaut Combat Specialist has a net rifle. Um, which has a range of eight inches, does blunt damage at, at a um, damage of five. And then if successfully hit, any units within one of the unit hit become entangled. Uh, and has two shots, it's ammo value down there, and has a massive two. So right now, everybody's carrying a bit of gear, um, and I've got my, my 12 oxygen and 15 credit list, basically for our first game. We went with more American superiority and decided to take a mass shotgun on this commander, um, which is a four shot, uh, 12 credit weapon, 10 inch range and a damage of eight blunt. Now he has stringent training, give plus one to any competency rolls for allies within four inches, but doesn't apply to his own. Um, he also has four actions in oxygen, three mobility, plus two competency, and plus four to his resilience. You can see my guys are a little more heavily armored. His generalist is armed with an improvised weapon. Now my generalist, you'll see, is uh, mobility two, but five resilience versus his mobility of three and four resilience. We got a little more armor on us. And he took a medical specialist who's competency one, armor four, and has medical training. A resin patch can be used twice before discarding it. And when within three inches of a unit that's out of action, that unit may make a free crawl action in any direction towards them, basically looking for medics. But cannot use range weapons, no guns for the medics. And he's got a resin back. Forces picked, we're gonna play the first mission, which is supply drop, I believe. We're trying to scramble for supplies. The cache, two players. An incoming supply rocket malfunctioned and crash landed on the lunar surface. The majority of supply crates have landed in three groups. Assemble your crew and retrieve as many of these as you can. So it's a two by two mat. Um, place a mine node in the center of the table. So what we did was we pushed three supply counters in the middle of the table as our mining node. Um, and then there are two other resource caches within six of the corners opposite And so we just use the number because each one can be interacted with only a certain number of times and we just pull a token off um, There are some nice resin markers in the expansions which we'll show off but We're just showing off the star set today. So the middle one's a mining node. Uh, the game plays over six turns uh, It has a mining action on a four plus to successfully pull off a single resource token and there's three available on that node the supply nodes are a interact action of five plus, adding your competency, one resource token, and they're two per node. Now resources do take up a mass, which means you get heavier the more you pull off. 
We have six inch deployment zones from opposite corners. There's no environmental hazards and the person with the most resource tokens at the end of the game will win. You must return the resource tokens to their starting deployment zones in order to score. And once returned, they can immediately drop them into the crew's stash. The resource is not placed on the table and will be used for tallying points at the end of the game. So when we drop them off uh, with the drop action, we get to basically get them automatically stuck in our stash. So we'll walk through the turn structure as we play. We dice off right now for dropping a model down for deployment. I got a five. All right, so you get to put your model down first. And we'll go back and forth and we'll be back after deployment. Regret so far as I don't have a guy armed with a hammer and a sickle, but we will have that eventually. So now that we're deployed, it's initiative. So the game structure is initiative, action phase, uh, I think it's end phase, and then rest. So then there's a recovery phase at the end where we drop potentially these counters here. So uh, we roll for initiative now. Whoever went first the previous turn loses ties. But I significantly uh, beat to the roll and get to go first. So I get to pick a model. I'm gonna go back and forth model by model and complete all of my oxygen in actions. Uh, so I'm gonna start with, I think, Johnny Rockhammer over here. Now he's a general, so he only moves two. So he'll go two, four, six, eight. And then he's going to exert himself to get into base to base. So I gotta start mining this node. Well, his action's done. So he took four movement actions and then took an exertion token in order to take the fifth one. And he's just hopping across the table here. Now, other things he could do is he could take a mining action for another uh, exertion token, but I think what I wanna do instead is use my leader's ability to push that there. So this is the old beta -roo. Maybe you can, uh, you're gonna come out and shotgun him, I assume, but we'll see. Get off my. That's <laughs> right. So it's over to you now. You get to pick a model and they get to do their oxygen actions. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna activate my commander, Commander Carl. Commander Carl? Yeah. Uh, he moves oh, three yeah, every sorry. time he acts. Jeez. That's okay. So three for the first oxygen. One, two, six. And he has a range of significant. Yeah, his range is 10. Uh, so he is going to shoot you in the name of freedom. <laughs> All right, now you could take other actions prior to shooting to try and guarantee this, like focus, which would give you a focus token, which gives you a later during the turn reroll potentially. Yeah, no, I'm uh, I'm firing off a shotgun in space. That's focus true. is not part of the focus plan. is not part of the plan. Okay, so now it's a competency test. You're always looking for a five plus generally, unless it's specified otherwise. Um, and you're adding your competency to this role. So what's his competency? His competency is plus two. Okay, I'm not obscured in any way, so there's no positive or negative modifiers to this. So three plus. All right, here we go. There we go. Done, all right. So now this is, there's two types of weapon damage. There's blunt and piercing. Blunt is when it's this um, sort of like closed number, and then piercing is here on my rock hammer. You see that open number. So this is blunt, uh, which means you're gonna roll your, da your blunt damage plus D6 versus my mass. Now my mass on Johnny Rockhammer is five. He's carrying a geology hammer for six. And so, I am plus eight with my shotgun. Ugh, so plus eight. Oof. Ooh, I'm okay. Seven. So now you got a seven total, I got an 11. The difference uh, positively for you is how many inches I'm knocked back, but I am knocked prone because I got uh, hit with this thing. So you knock me over with it, but don't push me backwards. And I have to roll a hazard dice for being knocked prone because I might rip my suit. So let's see what happens on my hazard die. No damage. So now the number of strikes that I roll be the number of rips that would go into my suit, but I didn't roll any. I am, however, prone, which would be bad for later on. That's my plan for um, the, uh, the the getting to hammer that rock right away. Now, um, you've taken one, two, three actions for firing. You could take a fourth. Yeah, and I am going to remember to track my ammo, so I use it one <laughs> round. Fair. Um, yeah, and then I guess... Now you could steady and then exert yourself to fire again. Yeah, that's going to gonna be the thing. Okay. So we'll steady, <laughs> and then we'll exert. So because we're on the moon and gravity so low, you have to actually reset your aim in between shots. Because if you don't, uh, your gun is just pointing up in the air at this point. So resetting, and then you're going to exert for another action, and yeah. see if you can hit so me again. Three plus again. Just click, click, boom. Go back to Earthengrad, commie. <laughs> yep. All right, so I'm already uh, on the ground, so you can't knock me prone again, but you do get to roll your D6 to see uh, my mass versus your thing. So that's going to be 12. Um, so 12 to my 10. Get off push my back lawn! Two inches. Uh, and I think I actually collide with this. Because it's a hill, you slam me back into the edge of the hill. Uh, and that's gonna mean I roll a hazard dice for contacting. 
when I take our suit rip. I'm just because I touched terrain during that uh, during that move. Shotgun's doing great. Now you can also knock uh, astronauts into other astronauts and have them damage each other. The bounce around effect is real in this. Now you can only ever have two exertions on yourself, and you've used two ammo now, so you've basically. Uh, just shotgun blasted to the hell out of this guy. What's interesting is you take a, for each, so basically I gotta push back an inch and then touch this, you take a hazard roll for each unused inch when you land into it. So the further you get pushed, the more damage you can take. And with that in mind, being the spirit of this, I'm gonna use my Cosmonaut Combat Specialist, and he's gonna move three, and then he's gonna move six, and then he's gonna move nine for his third oxygen over to here. And then that wall's looking real, real nice. Shoots eight, so now I'm, I'm less sure about this, so I'm gonna concentrate for my first action and then exert myself to fire my light launcher. I only have two shots with this, so I have to make this count. I didn't just bring up all this ammo from Richie Rich over here in the, you know, the, the, the Western world. Competency plus two, so I'm hitting on a three plus. Let's see if I can blast Commander Space Bucks over there. I do. See, I actually forgot this. Because I was prone, you were minus one to shoot me, actually, with the shotgun. The second boss, but it didn't matter. You hit me enough. So what's the mass on him? He, with his shotgun, he is going to be six. Seven, probably, because it's mass two. Oh, so, no, it's mass it, three. Yeah, so the one above it is the one you're seven. reading. Yeah. Seven in my damage of five. So you're plus two to this, which is cool, but you will become entangled no matter what. Oof. Oh, oh, I like it. All right, so, and I could have actually used this to re-roll as well. So I got eight total. Eight total to my 10. So you're knocked back two inches and prone. So you're actually rolling three hazard dice right now. Because you, you are sorry, you're using two for the inches you couldn't move, mm -hmm. and then it's one for being knocked from. prone. And you're entangled. So one, one two, two, three. three. Oh, he's losing oxygen. <laughs> it's a good thing you brought Johnny Meta, because Commander Space Box is definitely. In trouble. In damage with the range attack, I get a free move with my combat specialist. He's gonna duck over here and head towards this. I'm oh, sorry, he has to move in his front arc, so he moves like that and then he can spin slightly. Well, for the most unlikely plan, send the poor to do our work and then <laughs> bait out the, uh, the, the, the the upper class. Uh, Remington. <laughs> Remington sponsor. Yeah, this is, the, this is the year where, the, where NASA was sponsored by uh, Smith & Wesson. <laughs> Carlton, uh, I guess you can go for your next activation. I'm done too. Okay. Uh, before this gets any more out of hand, we're gonna activate my medic. Mm -hmm. He's gonna do some medicking. So he is. Oh, you have a special ability, don't you? Where you get to crawl towards somebody for free. Uh, when he's within three inches. Oh, when he's within three inches, yeah. people can crawl towards him. All right. You're you're too busy being entangled in a net right now. So he's gonna activate once, twice, and then thrice. Not once, not twice, but thrice. And then he is going to plug a hole. So you're gonna use your uh, resin patch? To plug the hole. Yep. Uh, normally that would use the resin patch up, but my medical training lets me use it twice. You're very efficient with it. So he's down to two breaches. And... Now normally going to the red would have cost him an oxygen this turn, but uh, he'll get, he's already gone, so it doesn't actually really matter. He'll get his oxygen back. And then you've got one, one oxygen left, because you moved yeah. twice and patched. So I'm actually gonna move past him. Be kind of basically standing where the counters are. Yep. And then I'm going to exert him to move again. Sweet. So he is running in whatever the opposite of gunning is. <laughs> running and mining. <laughs> well then, uh, it's boss cosmonaut's turn. All right, Yuri Gagarin, you're going to start moving. So first oxygen, second oxygen. Then he's going to use his ability for the motherland to have him stand up, but in a non-combat action. Uh, and then I could go third oxygen to go walk over to here. Now there's no pre-measuring in this game. So we'll just walk in. And then fourth oxygen, we're gonna move into melee and grapple by exerting ourselves. Grapple test is your uh, opposing mobility against each other to see if we then do damage with our improvised weapons. So I want a three. Also a three. All right, let's see what happens. 
Yeah. Oof. All right, so you got me, which means you win. You can take a free move action, or you could exert yourself again to make an improvised, uh, to make a melee attack. I am going to exert myself again, because it's all about <laughs> Dr. Fisticuffs. That's fair enough. So now we roll off again, and you make an improvised attack, which is basically a blunt weapon attack. Oh, no, you're actually using mass instead of mobility. Uh, my mass on my leader is six. I'm four. All right. So that's five. Uh, to my uh, seven. So you just miss in this case, basically. And, yeah. <laughs> and try and shove me, and we miss, and we flail at each other. You're all done. So it's over to you. Okay, I'm going to generalize over here. <laughs> so he is going to move four times. So we'll go one, two. Three, four. And then he's going to push himself as well. Yeah, because it might just go away at the end of the turn. Uh, so he's going to take one more move. By taking a exertion token. All right, so that's the end of the round now. No, no one's got out of action, so we have to test to see if one size decides to flee. Um, but we do get to rest. So starting with the player with initiative, we roll a d6 for each exertion token. On a four plus, they go away. So does this guy take a breath? He does. He'll lose his exertion. And then for my commander on a four plus... He also loses an exertion, and then for my combat specialist, he does as well. Generalist has one. It's on a four plus, it goes away. Nope. Nope. Uh, my medic has two. Loses so one. Loses one. So I have one less AP or oxygen next turn. And then my commander has, oops, has one. And so loses it. lose that. Which I can All right, and we're in round two, so we roll initiative again to see who's going first. That's me. We're going to do the easy stuff, and we're just going to start mining. So we're going to move one, and we're going to make a mining action. Now, he is a generalist, so he has no competency bonus, but he does have a rock hammer that gives him plus one. So he'll three plus the first one, does it, so he gains a resource token, which increases his weight a little bit. Second action, third one, he's going to try again, uh, and not make it. And then fourth one... He'll not make it. Guess we'll exert ourselves to try one more time and get one. And I think we're just happy. We're just gonna start running with our space bucks. We're gonna be like, I'm going to leave now. Nostrovia. Two exertion tokens though. Well done. So back to you. Okay. Uh... Captain Space Cakes, how you doing? <laughs> yeah, so... So he has to spend two actions to get out of the net, and then an action to stand up. Well, hold on. Okay, just, just saying. <laughs> so two to get rid of the entangled. Yep. Okay. Then he's going to take his free three-inch crawl action. Or no, he's within three. He gets to take a free crawl action. Okay, so you can move uh, an inch. I guess you could just stay prone, yeah? Yep. <laughs> I don't need to stand up to space shot for you, Connie. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so that was his third, no, that was his free one for one, the medic. Two. Yeah. yeah, so he's still got, <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> he's got one action, no, two actions left. So he's going to focus. Okay. <laughs> he's going to space shotgun me? He's going to space shotgun you. <laughs> All right. It's actually my comedy back, thank you very much. Um, so it's a five plus plus your competency. Let's see if prone gives you anything. But don't roll a one, because a natural roll of a one means your gun jams. Bring back my rocks, Kami! <laughs> that's right. These are my rocks! All right, you got me. All right. So that's blunt damage, and this thing is strength eight. Yep. Uh, but it's against my mass, which yep, ironically has gotten heavier. higher. That's right. So mine was six, seven, eight as well, actually. So we're just dicing off. Let's see what happens. We die, but I am not prone, so I have oh to roll my. for a hazard. And I drop all my items. Oh, you drop your counters? Yeah, yeah. you drop all your items. So they get dropped in base to base. Because any non starting equipment gets dropped when you go prone. Which is good because I would have flown away from it as well. Uh, and then I got to roll a hazard die because I got knocked down. I'm okay. And that was four actions, yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to stop this time, I think. Sweet. Yeah, I'm going to stay stop prone. This time. Yeah. I think we go with. You. Now, you can't see, unfortunately, because you have walked out of his line of fire, yeah, and you're 180 prone. 180 front, right? So, yeah, 180 front. So, we're just going to get up on the ridge here. It could be a, a heartbreak ridge. 
Actually, I'm gonna stay a little bit sideways here because we want to be able to move next turn. Uh, actually, we're already focused because we didn't spend it last turn. Those don't go away. Uh, and we're gonna we're gonna get to blast our last shot with our neck gun. Hey, you! <laughs> I didn't say you could stand up. <laughs> I didn't stand up, but you but you are lying conveniently next to a wall. Uh, so or I could shoot. Uh, you know what? Or I could shoot this guy. I could go to here and just blast this guy out of the way. I like shooting your medic more, I think, because he's standing up. Um, so we're gonna shoot him. He's in cover from the hill though, so he's minus one, and I'm competency plus two. So I'm I need a four plus here. So fours. And I'll re-roll it with my aimbot. Uh, so then it is a eight versus your mass. Eight versus four. Woo! Uh, no, sorry, it's a five. I'm on a nine, you're on a ten. So you get knocked prone, but you don't take any uh, movement. And no damage. Didn't do any damage, so I don't get a free movement. So that was one, two to shoot. I guess we'll just go... I need to turn around, so I need to go three, and then we'll go four. I'm out of nets. Uh, then we'll exert ourselves to try and do a technical objective. Now we're competency plus two, so we pick one up on a three plus. We got it. He's all done, so it's back to you. Generalist. Generally speaking. He is gonna generalize, so he is gonna move once. The files are. Now you want to be on a face where you want to move later too, so you kind of want to like face uh, like that. He's in the long That's right. Okay. Uh, he's going to try to mine that. Or on gather a five. That. Gather the gather resources. Uh, yeah. Space rock. Nope. nope. And then he'll try one more time. Nope. Oh, sadness. So those generalists, man, that, that zero competency is kicking in. That's right. Yeah. So you could exert again if you want to do a fourth thing. You know what? I'm they might well, go away. I'm standing on the objective anyway. Yep, and they might go away. So yeah, let's do that. You do. Hey, we'll it was worth this. Oh. That means you've got one in the bank. All right. Well, it's boss man's time. He's going to get up. And he's going to for the moment have this guy stand. Then you're prone, so I'm just going to hit you with my weapon. Prone, there's no grapple. We just go right to damage. And I'm plus three for my piercing value. You're plus four. That's my improvised weapon. So I got a six. I also got a five. So you're okay. No hazardous for that one. So I'm going to concentrate for my second action. I'm just going to do it again. I'll keep keep gun buttoning on the ground. That's a eight. Then that's going to be a nine. So you get pierced. You roll one hazard dice because I beat you by one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Guess I try one more time. <laughs> and it's Pierce 3. That's only 5 this time. Uh, so that's only going to be a 5 as well. So I'm going to spend my concentrate to re roll it. No, <laughs> it got worse. Apparently, trying to uh, like stab you with my improvised weapon is not working. Work. Well, we'll just do it one more time and we'll, we'll exert ourselves to do it. So you've got a uh, resistance of 4. I mean, you can roll again. Oh, I roll again. I yeah. didn't realize I, I got an again. eight. Uh, so that's a six. Okay, so this time around, I do get it twice. You're rolling two hazard dice for damage. I'll, I'll crack this thing open eventually. No, oh, oh, three damage. Three. That's a lot. So, so you're going to be losing an oxygen now because your suit's breached, but you get the uh, the patch actually can be used by you when you're about to go to action. Uh, he's all done. So it's back to new turn, I think. No, no you got somebody left. I actually gone with my medic. Oh, your medic hasn't gone yet. Okay. So your medic loses an oxygen for being uh, exerted and one for having your suit breached. So you, you get two, two actions. Yeah. So first thing he's going to do is patch himself. I don't know if you can do that when you're engaged. You can't because it doesn't say anything in the action for doing it. It just says spend an oxygen to do it. So you can patch your suit. Okay. Back the oxygen immediately for having Yeah, no, you don't get it in the same turn. Yeah, yeah. And then that uses that up. Yep. And you can uh, stand up or you could, because you can't fight me or do anything while you're prone. Uh, yeah, he'll stand up. Okay. He'll stop being prone. And you can exert yourself to do something if you want. Because you have one exertion left. Uh, Just gonna keep where it is. All right, uh, so that's the end of two then. Well, we haven't gone out of action yet, so no checks to see if we flee. So then it's just rolling for our exertion tokens. This fool on fours loses them both. The boss on a four loses his, and then my combat specialist loses his. Okay, so I've got two on my generalist. Lose uh, one. Lose one. And then Mr. Medic. One on my medic. 
No. And my boss doesn't have one this time? Nope, no, he doesn't I don't think so. One. And that's so it's round three. Nobody's got any resources off yet. Let's see who goes first. Just a one for me. So Just a me. one. Damn me. All right. Well, let's go with you. And you need to get, there's one. Is that shotgun not empty? Because I, I feel like if that shotgun's not empty, I'm in trouble. I have one left for that. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go one, two, and then we're going to go move two. So th three. Move two for four. Are we in my deployment zone yet? <laughs> I don't think I am. Um, so exert for five. And then drop off for six because we need to get on the board. So he's got one on him. And then he we've exerted. We've got one basically as a score now. My jewels, comrade! We'll go to my commander. <laughs> yep. He's going to stand up. Oops. Then he's going to move... Yeah, he's not bleeding any oxygen anymore. <laughs> this is happening? This is happening. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Two. And then... I'm going to give you my last shotgun round. <laughs> okay. Dodge this, Agent Smith! <laughs> All right, so you're raw... Oh, no, you do have a reroll. Yep. Uh, and uh, you are doing it on a... No minus. It's three, three plus. Three plus, do it. Click, click, boom. Yeah, hey. that's how we do it. Mm, all right, well, the mass on my boss is a six, and you're a plus eight for your damage. Can so. you fly, Bobby? <laughs> ah, use your reroll. I'm going to use, use my reroll for that. So I'm on a 12. You need to roll a five. Plus. You'll knock me down no matter what, but you'll need to roll a five plus to move me. No. Oh, okay. So, so I just get knocked prone. I'll knock you down. And I'll roll a house and die. And the boss says, no damage. Three. But you could... I guess be. Oh no, you can't make um, unarmed attacks against prone targets. Right. Only make it against not prone uh, targets because you're basically I, just body checking me. I will try to pick up that. Uh, Makes sense. Four plus. I need my space rock. Uh, two plus because your competency plus two, right? Oh, right. Plus yeah. two. I forgot about that. Yeah, my generalist is terrible at it, but you're not. Got it. Yeah, so I'll take that space rock <laughs> for freedom. That's right. We've captured the space rock for freedom. Now you can keep walking. Yeah, so I'm gonna Christopher walking my way out of here. So I'm, gonna, uh, I'm actually gonna take two of those boys. Yeah, that makes sense. Ahead of me. Say like peace out. And let's go six. <laughs> He's gonna do some moon bouncing. All right. Well, I think it's your turn, Mr. Legai. You're gonna stand up for one. I'm going to melee for two, and then we're just gonna make a melee attack because you're not prone. So I have to actually grapple you now, and I'm movement three. Same here. So nice and off. Ah, focus first, actually. Oh. So that's two, and then we'll roll. Uh, we tie. So I think we just tie. Let's finish apart. Boop, boop. That done. That was one, two, three. I'm going to go four. Ah, I can't turn around. Right. I so if I just go four to turn around, and then five to move three. And then if I'm within four plus, I'm going to shout this guy to drop his last rock, and I am. So he's going to drop his last thing, so I score again. It's two. It's you! I'm going to generalize again. So five plus to get my rock. <laughs> Do it. Yeah, we'll take that. <laughs> That's right. So that was, and you've got three actions. Yeah, so that was one, and then you got two left. So he is going to... Both pieces. Oh, right, because he has the, uh, the exertion on him, right? That's right, So yeah. he's going to first take two actions to go there. And then he's going to exert again yep. to go another three. And have two exertion on yep. him again, yeah. Thank you. And so where are we at now for score? I think there's one left, potentially. And we're almost there. But people are people are all beat up. Round four, or sorry, end of phase. Uh, oh, this right. guy gets to go even. Um, right. I can try and gather a resource at plus two. Nope. I can try and gather a resource at plus two. I do. Well, we gotta put a stop to that. And then he's at uh, eight, so he's he's actually minus one to his mobility now. He has to move two inches per turn. So we're gonna go. That was two actions, so three, four, and then five, six. We'll exert ourselves twice to get over to here. Deuces, I'm out. Going for our markers. So let's see if this guy loses any. He loses them both. Let's see if he loses any. Nope, he's very tired from the walk over there. And then the boss loses both his. Got two. Generalist, yep. Loses uh, one. Loses one. Got my commander, he has two. Commander space box, no. He's fine. And then uh, he's got one on my medic. Yep. Wow. 
It's a, this is a long fight. We're in round four, top of. Let's roll for some initiative. That's you. Me. Yeah, we're gonna activate the medic first. Okay. <laughs> so he's got. He's not bleeding oxygen, so nope. he does have three regular. Or yeah, because he's normally got four. And so he can exert one more time. Yeah. So he's going to go... He's going to tackle nine. me? So six. <laughs> if you knock me down, I drop everything, which is huge. Oh, I don't quite make it even. Uh, you could exert yourself to engage me at least. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so we're going to do that. And then just be in front, I guess, like that? Yeah. I have to fight you to get away, and my mobility is reduced right now because I'm... Um, carrying all this rocks. Yes, my mass is very low. Uh, well, I think... I think the boss isn't carrying anything, so the boss needs to go rescue his comrades. Don't worry, comrade, I'm coming. Uh, he's gonna go three. No, I'm starting outside your line of sight. Six. And we're gonna make a melee attack. Well, I get plus two to my mobility for being outside your arc, and then plus one because I have an assist. So I'm plus three to this, I'm mobility six. What kind of filthy animal attacks a medic? That's uh, so I'm on a 10, and then you get to roll your mobility roll. Uh, so this is three? Yep. So that is seven. Seven, okay, so you're knocked down, prone again. And uh, I get to make my melee stab against you, against your, oh sorry, you make a hazardous roll for that, and then do I hit you with my improvised weapon? So hazard, you're fine for that one, and then it's uh, three four. against your armor. Yep. So that's eight for I'll me. I'll spend my concentrate from last turn to reroll re this. No, I just reroll. Okay. And it gets worse, so you take no damage. So that was one, two, three. I'm just going to do it again for my fourth one and go straight to damage and keep on trying to crack you open with my gun butt. That's a ten for You're me. good. I'll exert myself to do it again. There's going to be squishy parts in there eventually. That's a five. That's a six. So I get you for one hazard dice. Nope. Okay. Exert one more time. <laughs> For the motherlands! I got a five. It doesn't uh, matter what you roll. Yeah, you're fine. And I, I did not crack you open. It's back to you. Okay. Uh, so I guess we'll go with my generalist. Okay. He's going to generalize. So he's got one exertion token. So he's going to go three first. What's his weight right now? Uh, he, uh, three. So three. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah. You're one, one away from having your mobility reduced. And I'm just going to check if he's there. Oh, yeah. You're in six. Yep. So then his second and third action will be to drop, drop everything both off. of those. Makes sense. And that's it, because he's only got three actions. Two. So no bonus stuff. All right. Well, uh, we're just going to leave <laughs> and go two, four. I only have two actions, though. So I end up here. Oh, I could have ordered him to. Oh, no, I do have four actions. That's right. I'll go two. Four, six, eight. And then am I within six? Not quite. So I'll take one more for an exert and I'll drop off one of my tokens. Two exertion, I'm still carrying one token. Back to Commander Carl. So he's going to go three. And then six. Oops, he's still too far away. So he'll go three again. And then he's got one action left. No, he doesn't. He does not have an action. That's line. right, because he can't exert. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah that's Perfect. right. He's got the two exerts. Yeah. <laughs> that's okay. it. Uh, so then it's end I'm of so this tired. Guy. That's right. On he's, the move. He's in a rest twice. <clears throat> and then he's going to move four inches towards this guy. And maybe we'll we'll jack him up with the rock hammer after this. Uh, so resting uh, at the end of the phase, this guy gets both of these taken off. Uh, the boss. Is not gonna have any rest. Uh, he'll keep his. Uh, Commander Carl uh, is gonna get rid of one. one. Sweet. And then my medic. Get two. No. One. Uh oh. Round five of six. Div. As to me. That's a lot of ones for me. This well, <laughs> it's a lot of ones. More than even the usual. <laughs> <one's> <laughs> <on>. <laughs> it's truly, for initiative in particular, a lot of ones for you. But we're just gonna go first over here. And this guy's going to hammer time. Find all the prone and fatigue markers, it'll be fine. So we go straight to damage with the rock hammer, yeah. it's plus four this time. Ooh, sorry. Uh, so that's nine. Uh, nine as well. Uh, then I'm gonna focus, and I'm gonna do it again. Oh, that's only a five. I will re-roll with my focus, and it gets slightly better. So that's gonna be a seven, so you make two hazard rolls instead of one. Take mining hammer! 
Ah! Who is going to do it? Choking out. All right, so the end phase, if he's not patched, he will go out of action. Too far from help. Uh, so that's him all done. Oh, wait, is it pure? No, it's not cutting. If you have a cutting weapon, when you go um, to your last box, you just immediately go out of action. With that token. You. So we'll activate uh, commit a crawl. So he's going to actually I'll rest once just to get rid yep. of that. Then that's one. He's got two left. He'll drop that. Mm-hmm. And then three. They go rack his shotgun menacingly. No, there's nothing in his shotgun. <laughs> he wishes there was. He'll turn it around so he's holding it by the barrel end. <laughs> that's right, like, yeah. <laughs> Mickey Mantle, that thing. I'm, I'm coming for you, Tommy. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so we're going to drop off our last thing with him. Uh, his gun's empty. He'll just dirtle in the deployment zone and be like, Back to Soyuz, your specialist. So yeah, he'll rest away that thing. Or your regular guy, yeah, My mission generalist. guy. Just gonna go look. Start sing start singing Danny Boy for the Mavic over here. Right? <laughs> you were the best of us. Right. I'm still alive! <laughs> I'm just gonna rest twice and watch him suffocate. <laughs> so he'll go out of action at the end. My medic's name is Goldfish. <laughs> And then you get to actually roll now. You've taken a casualty. If you roll more on the hazard die than you have guys out of actions, you roll the two basically yeah. to rest your team bottles. You do. Yeah, so that's right. You've already dropped everything off, so it doesn't actually matter, yeah. but you guys decide to bottle out, and you're like, well, the pipes are calling. Enough of that. That's right. <laughs> and the co the comrades will watch that guy suffocate to death. <laughs> we got 40 or 3 at the end of it, all super close. And what is our reward? Um, so post game credits, the player that collected the most resources gains four additional credits and you gain two. So we'll just, we'll, for when we start the mission next game, we'll just start with those in our stash. End of the game, we get, we get commissioned now by our, uh, relevant nations to, to go on an adventure. For the campaign, we'll assume you automatically pass, but there is a post game sequence you get to roll. Yeah. To see what happened to our guys and we'll, we'll see what we actually did here. So you gotta roll lasting injuries. So first, lasting injuries recovery, crew death, you may acquire new units by requesting a shuttle launch. Uh, otherwise you might die. So during the post game phase, roll on the table below for any unit taken out of action. Uh, any units that were removed from play during the game add minus two to their 2d6 rolls. See what happens, 2d6. 2d6 minus two? Minus two. So that is a 10. Uh, so, uh, if you rolled the 12, it was shake it off soldier, then it's totally fine. When they get back, they have a great drinking story. We'll say that that's what actually happened. Um, but you just get minus one of your movement for a serious hit for the, the next game. Uh, and that's an existing injury. You can only spend five credits to get them to full health. The, way, the difference between out of action and from play is, he was out of action if he, um, when he loses his last integrity point. If you take any more damage after you're out of action, then you're removed from play. You took exactly the right amount to go out of action. And you had two recovery phases, basically, to get patched up or be out of action at the end of the game. Remove from play is if you take any additional damage after that, or if you are hit with a cutting weapon, which none of our weapons had. So you actually rolled that box cars then, you're totally fine, you have a great drinking story, you don't suffer the minus two, because you weren't RFP during the game, and you ran away, basically, before any of that stuff would happen at the end of the game. If you'd been in that condition at the end of turn six, it still would've been another recovery phase before you actually like right. lost all your action. You're basically laying, we're watching you freak out and lose all your action on the ground and telling like campfire stories. Our mission rewards, so four credits and two credits, then we weapon up, keep an ammo. Any non-rare items or equipment has a, I don't want to carry over into the next mission, don't require any upkeep. Uh, you have to spend a credit for rare, non-rare and multi-use weapons with ammo values can be reloaded for one credit. Oh. So we actually have to spend a credit each to reload our guns. So for our rare weapons, roll a die. On a one to three, the item is fine. The weapon can be reloaded for two credits. On a four to six, it's damaged and can't be used next game. But we can roll to try and reload it later. On a six, it's destroyed. So as we use our rare weapons, they might like degrade and go away. We take out loans and stuff from different uh, different loan companies and loan sharks, but we'll get to that when we actually play the campaign. Uh, so for the campaign, the narrative, we're gonna basically retell the story of the uh, Soviets getting to the moon first. We call up our crew, we get 12 auction and 12 credits to start with. You can never start a campaign with rare items, and a crew can only start with one commander and one specialist. We basically get one generalist and one um, specialist type. Uh, we also get to pick a... Ah! 
crew. So I'm gonna pick a military crew because I'm obviously, you know, expansionisting onto the moon. And Jay could pick from military, mining, engineering, and science, or corporate. Now you are, of course, NASA. So um, the recommended crew would be engineering and science because you are a space agency, like a science agency, not necessarily a military agency. Boons to your crew, which are skills that you get. And then on top of that, you also get settlement boons for when you go back to your little lunar base. So for the military one, any units other than the commander, uh, within four inches of the commander get plus one to grapple challenges. So basically I'm a bit better at fighting near the commander. And then crack shot, any units within four of your commander other than the commander get plus one to shooting competency checks. So I'm better at shooting. And then my settlement boon, mountaineering, before you start the game, you can choose one impassable um, terrain feature to be dangerous instead, because I'm good at climbing stuff. And then gunsmith, when I roll for my rare weapons on a four to five, I treat them as a one to three. All of my miss a game for my weapons, it goes away. It's basically only a six my weapon can't be using or is destroyed, and I can just pay to reload on a one or two all the time. Now, for Jay's medic, he'd get the sawbones ability. You can choose any crew member to start with a free resin patch every mission. So your medic becomes like a, a free extra two credits that you have every game and then brainiac any multi-use non-weapon items gain an extra use so for instance there are um certain items that be used more than once per game you you basically get an extra time being able to use it i think a good example is the nerve tank's a good one so it's extra oxygen basically that you can use per round and has three uses it's extra actions basically so his could be used four times instead of three all non-weapon items cost one less credit and advanced triage when rolling on lasting injuries you can always go up and down the table by one so here we go another look at a uh, indie published game from black Sight studios of course you've seen the don't look back games um and we're gonna be starting and kicking off our campaign next episode having recruited our basic forces of cosmonauts and nasa uh astronauts to try and take over the moon there wasn't a couple disappointments um there was no uh whalers faction i was a bit unhappy about the uh, fact that i could not harpoon and tell tall tales um so we sing a, a sailing moon and doubloons yeah there's no doubloons there's no whalers on the moon um also every movie jan i watched while painting these involved a chimpanzee eating someone's face at one point in the film and so not being able to have a monkey with a knife in a spacesuit just felt slightly wrong apart from these very minor criticisms we had a ton of fun um it definitely felt bouncy like we were on the moon the physics in the rule set felt really cool um and of course it's a super low model count and super small table size so it's a great add to your kitchen table collection so um you can check out the book review of the actual rule book if you want to see a flip through as well in my gmg reviews and we'll be back in two weeks for our next episode thanks for watching till then ash hey there i hope you enjoyed that video there are tons of other games all recorded for you to watch Click over to my channel page if you haven't already, and have a look through the dozens of playlists full of videos. I guarantee you'll discover a game you haven't seen played before. I put out new videos seven days a week, and every day is themed to a different genre as I continue to explore the wider world of gaming. Of course, none of that's possible without you, the viewer, so click a like and subscribe if you'd like to stay on top of what's happening here daily. My two kids and I are massively grateful to be able to have the flexibility of this job so I can always maximize my time with them. If you want to support me continuing to put out this content, it's only possible because of my amazing backers on Patreon who support the studio, equipment, and model cost, as well as being how I make the bulk of my living. You can also help out by buying a t-shirt through Spreadshirt, a measuring gauge or widget from Death Ray Designs, or buying one of my games and supplements like Last Days, Game of Wolves, and Blaster. As a way of showing my appreciation, patrons get early access to new games and supplements that I write throughout the course of the year. Huge thanks for watching, it really does help out, and happy gaming.